What's up everyone, welcome back to Lace Up Channel. My name's Mickey. In today's video, we're gonna talk about how AI is revolutionizing food distribution. Let's get right into it. So there's five phases to AI and distribution, and we're currently in phase one, which is large language models and data analysis. Now, if you're anything like me, you've used AI to write emails, to prospect new customers. Maybe you asked it to tell you a funny joke and it did. But in my opinion, these are just very rudimentary cases that don't actually provide value. Where the value lies and what AI is extremely good at is at math. It's great at predictive analysis. As a matter of fact, if you upload to AI a data set containing your sales data for the last six months, you can derive almost any piece of information from that data set. For example, ask it to compute for you the reorder point and the safety stock for that item. It'll do it, it'll do it in a couple seconds. Ask it to predict a purchase order for the vendor from that item. It'll do that in a couple seconds. Ask it to analyze the data and tell you where the peaks and valleys are in your sales trends. That's something it's very good at. As a matter of fact, I've tried it with test data set that I've uploaded it and it's given me perfect answers. Try this example, make a spreadsheet with your sales data, including the vendor, the item sold, the quantity sold, the customer you sold it to, the date sold. Oh, and one more field, the on hand of that item in your current inventory. That's it. Last six months of that data, upload that to the AI and have it make you a purchase order for tomorrow from that vendor. And you'll see how it does it with a scary amount of accuracy. Then follow that up with asking the AI to, to spot seasonality in your sales and tell you when the sales drop. Have it tell you when the sales increase. Have it recommend to you when to scale up your warehouse staff based on those sales. And I think that'll, give you with a scary degree of accuracy exactly what to stock in your warehouse, what to purchase and what you're going to sell. So we talked about phase one. I think now we need to talk about what comes after data analysis, and that is voice and natural language processing. You'll see how every single voice over IP vendor is including an AI agent in their telephone communications, which means when you call a business and you speak to somebody on the phone, that somebody's an AI and the AI or the software running that AI is constantly making petitions to the API of these large language models to, ret to retrieve the, the voice that they're then going to tell you. So basically you're communicating directly with these large language models. In short, that means you can use that AI agent to set appointments. You can use it to place an order. You can use that AI agent uh, to, to file a complaint, to, to see the customer satisfaction, to do a bevy of different tasks that your people in the back office are doing today, all done by a singular AI agent ru running on Ring Central, for example. So I think right now we're at the tail end of phase two and I think voice is going to become ever more prevalent as all these software providers are adding it. Um, where I think this is going now in the very near future is vision. Some of the features of which have been implemented and some of which are coming. So the features that have been implemented with vision and you can run this test yourself. Take your phone, open the AI, let's say you use Claude, go to a product facing, take a picture of the display, have it ask or ask the AI how many facings you have on that display. Have it take inventory of those facings and you'll see how it does it with a deadly degree of accuracy. Um, now imagine if in your merchandising application, you can take those same images and then have the AI derive everything from the image. So if you were to call up that image from a report in the back office, you'd be able to ask the AI any question about that image and have it return to you the data attributed to that image and you could save it and run reports against it. And more importantly, you can have the AI back to point one, run an analysis on that data. And that's where it gets crazy. I think that that process right now is currently being integrated by almost all every single merchandising app. But I think when AI makes it into the warehouse, that's where everything is just gonna explode. Because I, look, even though I think we're a few years away from like pure humanoid robots in the warehouse picking everything, I think that someone in the interim is gonna come up with a way to pick, pack, ship, and check everything with vision. So imagine a world where everybody in your warehouse has a set of glasses. Those glasses have two cameras like the Ray-Ban glasses running meta right now, and they have a little microphone on the ear. Every single time you're receiving a product, it's incrementing the quantity and verifying the lot number and basically making sure that the right item's received. Then every time you put that product away, it knows exactly what bin that product was put away at. Now, when you go pick the product, it can check that you're picking the product from the right bin location, and then it can check that you're picking the right product 
as you're picking it. So no longer do you need to have a checker check your loadouts before they're loaded out onto the truck because the AI in those glasses will tell the picker if they're making a mistake. So vision pick, pack, ship, I think is the natural progression to the next phase of AI. Phase four after large language models, audio, and visual is autonomous agents. You've probably heard the buzzword. There's gonna be agents that do everything and everything is considered an agent. But I think it's important to define what an agent is. In my opinion, an agent is an AI that runs in your operation and can interact with all the different applications that you, that you use. It can open up a computer desktop, it can go between your ERP, your WMS, your accounting system, your payroll system, and it can execute all of the tasks associated with those pieces of software. How many people do you have in your back office running your operation, all these softwares? Well, I think ultimately all of those people get replaced with an AI agent. Now, if you've used um, AI operator from ChatGPT, from OpenAI, you'll see how the operator can open up a browser and execute any task you tell it to do within that browser. And, it's, and it literally moves the mouse around and, and does every single task you tell it to do on the screen. Cloud AI also has an AI you can download to your desktop and have it interact with everything on your computer. Now, the problem with AI is it, it doesn't chain together a set of thoughts to get to a mission and successfully analyze the pros and cons of all the options in between starting and ending that mission to find the most efficient way to get to that mission. That's where the AI is getting smarter. I think within the next six months to a year, the AI will be smart enough to say, okay, you need me to process payroll. What is the fastest way for me to do that? Right? And how frequently do I need to do it? And it can actually think for itself and process the payroll. Uh, for you DSD managers, for example, you currently st spend a lot of time doing your route balancing and your route optimization. At the end of the day, there should be an AI that just looks at your routes and does the balancing and optimization for you because at the end of the day, all you're trying to do is cube out a truck to 90% and have it run the most efficient route possible. And that's just an example, but you get the point. You're working within a certain parameters and you're looking at a system to make decisions on what you do with those routes. I think that's gonna be a tremendous use case for AI agents, which means that back office employees, DSD distributing, um, distributor managers, DSD managers, these people are going to be in charge of managing the AI. So the AI ultimately will become the one that does the job and then you will have human validators to ensure that the job was done correctly and to correct the AI if it makes a mistake. And that's why I think agents are probably one of the biggest leaps that most of us are gonna see. Whoever can implement these agents across all of their computers in the back office will have the most success. And that's before we go into full automation and human and robots, which is the final phase. Now you've probably seen the Tesla robot, you've seen all these companies trying the humanoid robot. Whoever does that is gonna completely disrupt distribution because what'll happen is you'll have these humanoid robots at a cost of let's say $70,000 one time, picking cases all day long. You'll have pickers that don't get tired, pickers that don't need breaks, pickers that basically run back and forth in the warehouse moving these cases. And the ROI on those robots is gonna be tremendous because in short, if you can get a robot for what it costs one of your employees per year, that's where everything gets, gets completely disrupted. Now, I don't think we're there yet. I've personally never seen a robot that can do this reliably, but with AI vision, with voice, and with robotics at the current rate of development, which I think is an order of magnitude of what it was versus five years ago, I think that we're gonna get to the point where there will be robots in the warehouse running the entire warehouse operation. And, and it's not a pipe dream, this isn't the Jetsons. Like I think by 2030, these robots will be deployed everywhere. So stay on top of that because I think the ROI is tremendous. So you're probably thinking, okay, we've, you've talked about some things, Mickey, that are loosely valuable to me. Uh, maybe you're not seeing how you can actually deploy this into real life. I think the answer is pretty simple. You have to instill a culture of AI in your business. You have to get the smartest people in your business to use it every single day to analyze all your processes and to make those processes more automated, more accurate, more streamlined. The moment you set this initiative, sure it's gonna add costs to your P&L, but those costs are added now to be removed later by a factor of 10 at least. So I think here's how I would start. I would sign up for ChatGPT or Claude, me personally, because of the interface and how smart it is with data, I love Claude. 
you make the account and then you start feeding it data to start seeing how it works. Then you start feeding it images to see how it works. And you start reaching out to your voice over IP vendor to see what they're working on with their AI agent. And last but not least, you keep an eye out on Claude and on OpenAI looking for the first AI agent that you can deploy to your desktop and give it a set of tasks on a recurring basis that it can execute. Then you have it test that. Once it can execute those tasks with a scary, with a scary degree of accuracy and then turn back to you with any potential problems that, that, that occur, I think you're gonna be able to start cutting costs in your back office by a significant margin, ultimately increasing the EBIT of your business. So I think it's more about setting the culture right now than actually having a defined, you know, here are the seven AI agents you're gonna use. You need the culture because the team has to be on offense every single day looking for these AI solutions to implement them in your business. So in review, get yourself a large language model account if you don't have one already and start trying it for data, for vision, for voice, and last but not least, keep your eye out for these autonomous agents that are coming. And I think within the next six months, your business is gonna transform, your EBITDA is gonna increase, and you're welcome. Your business is gonna be more valuable. So if you enjoyed that video, go down below, give me a like, subscribe, give me a comment, whatever. And I look forward to seeing you next video. Take care.